a little warm out there, a little sunny, which was good. Are we ready? Okay. Well, this might be the first time since I've been here we don't have any unofficial official stats today, so you guys don't have to get carpal tunnel and all that stuff trying to click all the keys and whew, well, I don't know where to start. Um, very warm day. It uh, tested them. We ran probably between 50 and 60 plays with our ones and twos. Our threes got at least 32 plays. That's the most plays that we've had our threes get in a long time. Uh, a lot of that had to do with just the depth that we were beginning to create. And uh, we were been relatively healthy in, in this camp. We start with 105 and we, we were able to get uh, two really good number three units, and uh, which is great for the development of those players. And also, um, it quite frankly, gives the twos and the ones a little bit of a break if the threes are taking a rep every third rack, so to speak. Format was uh, eight play drives from the 25, and then from the 30, and then from the 35, and then we went to the plus 40. We had a one minute drill uh, at the end of the half, which the defense uh, dominated both of those. Um, we had a couple of Hail Mary shots uh, that the defense defended. Um, then we went to uh, third and short. And I think the offense got it at least three out of four times, maybe four out of four. We went to third and medium. And uh, that's when the offense kind of sparked up a little bit, started making plays, uh, actually made some long touchdowns uh, a couple times in the third and medium and third and long. So in third and medium for four shots, third and long for four shots, when a, a uh, drive, uh, two red zone drives from the 12, and uh, both offensive units scored touchdowns. And then on the goal line, I, I don't know if the offense scored in that drill or not. Um, I know uh, maybe one maybe one time. I, I don't remember if we completed the pass or not. We threw one pass. But every time we ran the ball, we got stopped. So defense bowed their necks on the goal line. Did a good job there. Um, I'll just kind of let you all ask me questions from this point. I, I will say it looked like we came out of there pretty clean. Uh, didn't see anything injury-wise that, that looked like something. But every once in a while, you wake up tomorrow and find something. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Well, let me think. I think all of them had bright moments. We, we probably threw the deep ball better, better, better today than we have all camp. Um, and they all, I think every one of them had a, had a deep ball throw that was on the money that uh, either scored or got a long gain. Um, we've got a lot of... Um, the, the short to intermediate passing and catching has just still not been up to the standard that it needs to be for us to move the ball on a consistent basis. Um, there's a couple uh, calls that weren't great as far as uh, changing protection a couple times, probably caused a sack rather than uh, got the people in the right spot protection wise and um, and I know I'm not helping you all by saying this guy did this and this guy did that but um, there's a method to the madness here I think it's important that we're the ones that watch the film we're the ones that decide who, who the guy is we don't need anybody in the media telling us who should be the starter and that kind of thing and um, you know right now it's been very uh, very equal as far as reps, and, and uh, there hasn't been a huge landslide of one guy just running away with it. There's been moments on any given day where a, a guy said, you know, if you had if you had like rounds in boxing, you might have said that guy won that round, that guy won that round, that guy won that round. So I will say it's still a very tight race, and uh, I don't I don't believe we have any separation at this point. Was the deep ball throwing come in something you were concerned about with each of these guys? Uh, uh, well. We we did we didn't throw and catch the deep ball very good up until today. I thought we 
did a much better job of that. I think the receivers did a better job of um, creating space for the quarterback, whether beating somebody deep or at least giving them enough of the sideline to throw, uh, you know, that back shoulder throw that Murray used to throw forever. Uh, the DBs uh, had been just running them into the sideline and uh, and forcing uh, just very, very tough throws. And uh, there really weren't, uh, gosh, I don't think there was an interception. We had a couple fumbled snaps. We had one shotgun snap that got away. Those all happened relatively early. Um, there might have been a third fumble snap that got picked up and actually got thrown for a completion. So it didn't kill us, but anytime you fumble a snap, it, you could you could lose a game because of it. Um, so we got to clean that up. Mark, do you think there's a chance before the next scrimmage that you'll have uh, separated uh, two guys to compete for the job and have a third guy punt? Mm, I, I don't. I would say probably not, but you know maybe by the third scrimmage, but I, I don't think so for the second one. Mark, you mentioned in the past following your first scrimmages of fall camp the disparities between the ones and the twos, mm -hmm. uh, 2012, 10, and 09. Name yeah. What about the the biggest disparity or you know level of readiness? is from the number one offensive line to the number two offensive line. That's that's the most glaring thing. Um, our number two unit is not ready to play winning football, in my opinion, right now. I think they're getting better. Uh, but, you know, I think they're – I mean, some of the hardest things to do – one of the hardest things to do in football is just pass protect a uh, very talented edge rusher. I mean, Lorenzo Carter today – worked mostly against the number two unit and they couldn't hardly touch him. You know, if he was working against the ones, it would have been a better battle for him. You know, he still, I'm sure, would have won his share. Uh, and, and, and certainly Jordan Jenkins uh, created a lot of pressure even against the number one unit. So th there was, you know, a lot of edge pressure by those guys, which isn't surprising. They're, they're great rushers for us. And, um, but yeah, between the one line and two line, that's, that's the biggest issue and uh, biggest concern if you said it. If I had the biggest concern, that would be it. And as in a situation where, where you don't feel like any of those number two guys are ready to step in and, and maybe provide depth, or is it a situation where th th that group as a unit just isn't working very well? For right now, there I don't know if there's anybody on that unit ready to play winning football yet. You know, and it's not I'm not trying to dog them out. I'm just, they're just developing. They're getting better. They're learning. Um, the guy would be the closest, in my opinion, would be Hunter Long. You know, if Hunter had to play center or guard, he, I think we can keep functioning pretty good. Um, the rest of the guys at this moment, I'd be a little, a little more concerned with them. It's huge. Really, I mean, if he wasn't there, somebody would have been there all along, and maybe they would have been a little further along, possibly. But and sometimes when guys see, hey, I'm the guy, it just changes their life a little bit sometimes. But um, yeah, I'm glad he got his sixth year back. Do you want him to see the course of the guys with you there? Well, it wasn't just one guy catching deep balls. Uh, we had some. Uh, uh, we had some ups and downs uh, overall catching the ball as a unit, but uh, as far as anyone in particular, again, I'm this camp. I'm just a little bit different on wanting to brag on guys right now. I just want them to think about the team and just keep keep plugging away. But we had, we had some nice plays by the receivers for sure. Why why are you why I'm just curious why you, that is a little different for you yeah. now is. Well, I think probably because of this quarterback thing. I'm not saying much about that. So I'm not saying much about anything right now um, as far as who's doing this and that because it really doesn't matter until we start playing the games. And, um, you know, once we start playing the games, if they do it in the game, it'll be for the world to see and everybody can, you know, judge it from there. But, um, you know, I mentioned a couple of defensive ends and all that kind of thing, just some saw guys. Um, 
we did uh, we did kick some field goals. Marshall has been kicking the ball very well. Uh, he did miss one today, but it was a little bit of a rough uh, a rough operation. A little bit of a low snap, a little bit of a bobble, trying to get the ball down. The timing wasn't just right, and we missed one. But uh, other than that, he's been kicking good. And, and Colin's been punting uh, much better at the beginning of camp now than he finished in the spring. A big, big difference. The operation was kind of missed in the spring, too, wasn't it? Some of the field goals. The operation? Yeah, in the spring. You're talking about an issue? Well, it really is, is only, really probably only one I can think of since we've started. So overall, it's been, the operation has been real good. But this one in particular, particular was a little bit low and inside. And the holder was working hard to get it down. And he got it down, but it, I, I think it disrupted the timing a little bit. Would you be a little hesitant about your starting guy, your starting quarterback being the holder? Uh, not really. Not really. Because um, certainly it keeps people on their toes for fakes. And if you're worried about fakes, then you sometimes play safe looks on, on that unit, which means you're not trying to block the kick. Or at least you're not all out. You're not going all out to block it. There may be a middle block or an edge block or something, and everybody else playing defense. So, uh, I can't remember the last time I saw somebody run into a, a holder. You know what I mean? If you think about it, I, mean, I can't think of. I can't even think of a time I saw somebody barrel into a holder. So I think he's pretty safe. You mentioned a fumble snap. How has that gone for most of camp? And is the center right. position pretty locked down? Well, I'll say this. This is kind of a funny story, but you may have already heard this. But uh, Cablano, as a snapper, he snaps, you know, under center pretty good. Not a problem, but the shotgun snap was kind of rough on him. He's, I don't know if he ever really learned how to throw a football, quite frankly, and he's a lefty, and it's, so it's a little bit different. And most snappers grab it like a passer would and then and snap it like a passer would kind of pass the ball. That's how they snap it. Well... He just was struggling doing that because he really can't pass it very good, I think. Because we started trying to teach him how to throw so he'd know how to snap. So finally, uh, one day he shows up with a new technique and um, and it started working. It was kind of a, some people use it across the country, but kind of grabbing more of the, more of the nose of the ball, the top of part of it, and, and just bringing it straight through and, and snap it back more like a punt or whatever. But he controls that better. He snaps it better. There's no wrist action that makes the ball go up or right or left or whatever. It's, it's been a straight, firm snap. It hadn't been a spiral like you see a lot of people do, but it's been really effective, you know. So I'm trying to figure out how he figured out how to do it, and I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently he got on the Internet and started looking at different ways of sna shotgun snapping it, and somebody had uh, some video on that technique, and he started using it. And I became a believer in about two practices. So is it an end over end kind of? Thing? Well, sometimes it's uh, it's a slow. Sometimes it's kind of a slow end over end. It's not spinning like a kick, but it's more like that kind of a slow, uh, kind of like my back flip, kind of slow. <laughs> you know, not rotating real fast. There's no issue with the, the quarterback to get the ball. No, it's been good. I mean, it's been firm. It's been right in the middle of their belly button. You know where we want it, and I mean, it, it changed my sleeping habits, my sleeping patterns, because I, I was worried about those snaps. And you think he's, he's a guy at center? Well, right now, he's he's the number one center, and he's been getting most of the work, you know, at, with the number one group. Hunter's got some work with the ones as well. Are you guys emphasizing <coughs> recruiting Maryland, D.C. with Pat Allen and Ron Briscoe and Brent Collins, or is that just a coincidence? Well, we've just done a very good job of evaluating people across the southeast. And getting on them early and making offers early, and um, it just so happens we nailed. Gosh, I think those guys were Player of the Year, uh, defender and, and offensive player in their area. Uh, so that's a it's a great talent pool right there, and uh, we just really hadn't dipped into it before. But now that we have you know restructured some of our recruiting and got more people involved. Um, and just kind of stretched our borders a little bit more, our local borders, so to speak. It's been good for us. Yeah, Nick. Nick got a lot of work. Uh, Sony got a lot of work with the ones we uh, we did hand the ball off, and you know, because in the spring, Nick really just did third downs. And Sony was already hurt. You know, in the spring, that first day of tackling, that's when Sony hurt his back. 
And then we had somebody else was struggling. I forgot who. And we're like, we can't even let uh, Nick carry the ball much because we already got Sony out of here and uh, we just wouldn't have been able to function through the spring. Matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, Quavon Hicks was running a lot of one back runs at tailback uh, during the spring. But since everybody's healthy, we felt good doing it. And you, no matter who you are, or how many times you've done it, you need to get used to carrying the ball, people trying to tackle you, you know, just just playing football. And the other thing too is you want you want continuity in your offense. You want to gain confidence in what you're doing, and you want your best players in there while you do it. So we may taper back a little bit as we get closer to the games, but my guess is he'll get some reps uh, in the next scrimmage as well, unless something happens to somebody else in the meantime. But when you have enough depth, you can share the load in the scrimmage and not feel as bad. With UGA's fan day being tomorrow and with what happened with Todd last offseason, um, have you sort of changed how you approach and coach your guys to act and behave off the field as fans and, and coaches? Well, you know, you're just about to the point where you say, don't sign anything for anybody. But that, that's tough. I mean, you're out on the town, you have a wonderful family, you got a cute little six-year-old boy with a bulldog hat on and he, and he looks up at you like, can I have your autograph? I mean, it's just hard to walk away from that. So I don't think we can get to that point, but we just, you know, obviously if you are doing it for pay, then you know you're wrong and you just shouldn't do it. And uh, I, don't, I don't even think, especially with what happened last year, that we need to have a long lecture on that, quite frankly. But we do, we do say it, but we say it anyway, but I'd hate to think we'd had to. Y'all, this is I mean, allegedly the last day of fall camp. I guess it looks that way. Y'all still have school and so forth. Did you get done what you needed to do? With this? I think so. I think so. Do you I, always feel that way? Um, no, not always. I think I think the we we do have some injury. We've had some guys get banged up, but we haven't had anything that looks like. We're losing him for the season. No, um, you know, guys that we're kind of counting on at this point. So that's been good. Um, we really got every practice in, even though we took a day uh, to swim. We actually, um, we over booked, so to speak, knowing that probably one of those days would end up being used up with weather. So we only had one of those days, and, and so we were right on track to getting our 29 opportunities. Um, now we still got more, you know, three more weeks, but the weather, the current, I mean, the relatively n near future, it looks pretty good for weather. Um, yeah, I think we've done a good job of uh, getting prepared. The kicking game, the only thing we did a little different is today, we decided to go pure scrimmage and um, hold off on some of the kicking situations till the next couple of days. But other than that, we, we got it all in. You said before the season started, you felt like special teams wise, you had more guys to run and hit than, than you've had in a long time. I mean, since, since fall camp has been you know going on and you've got right. a chance to actually see those guys oh, yeah. run and hit. No doubt. Do you, do you still feel that way? No doubt. There's no doubt. We've got, um, you know, we signed more de defensive players than um, Offensive players and, and most teams are most special teamers are defensive guys most of the time. I mean, the kickoff return a little difference here and there's a few offensive guys, a couple of receivers here and there, and some running backs here and there. But for the most part, it's linebackers, safeties, corners, uh, doing the majority of it. And we just we just got an influx of those type of bodies and those types of uh, players, and it's been good. It's been very good. Last question. Uh, I know mental, you know, mental mistakes has been a huge uh, thing you guys have, I mean, I know you do yeah. it every year. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how, how was today on a, on a mental mistake level? It was not, certainly not perfect. Uh, what I saw was a little more just hesitation on just getting lined up properly. And it was young guys. I mean, just, you know, Lining up, am I on the line, am I off the line, am I split, uh, a, a vertical split or, or, a, or a, you know, a short split, you know, short, medium or long split. I mean, so just the uncertainty of it being exactly where I'm supposed to be before the ball snap, but um, very few mistakes that I could see, glaring mistakes that I could see after the snap of the ball. A lot of it was just getting lined up properly because we're trying to do it with pretty good tempo. 
and the young guys are, you know, it's just, it's a lot for them, but, uh, but ultimately end up getting there, but it's not crisp, you know, the older guys got it, you know, pretty good, and that's the thing again, again, you're working in the ones, the twos, the threes, you know, by the time, you know, we, when we start playing, it's mostly ones and twos, and, uh, and mostly ones getting the work, so, but the threes are getting better and developing, and, and a guy could get bumped up at any moment for injury or just, you know, based on performance. Okay, gang. Have a good day.